Welcome to Digital Asset News. I get top stories in crypto and I bring them out of bite-sized pieces. So today there's more stories of mass adoption coming and also uh, demand as Fidelity commits to crypto and increases the digital asset staff by 70%. And what's interesting is not about what is going on with, with the increase, but why they're actually increasing it and who it's because of and the demand from. So we'll take a look at that on top of a little FBI warning for all digital and cryptocurrency owners. And uh, usually when I see these types of things, I'm a little bit uh, perplexed as to why they're doing these because I'm always uh, a little bit uh, hesitant to agree with them, but this one actually does have merit and it's pretty important to talk about. And then finally, we'll take a look at uh, a AMA stream, which uh, was hosted by Charles Hoskinson over there at uh, Cardano on IOHK. And he says something very interesting about Cardano and El Salvador. So we'll take a look at those three stories, but first let's take a look at what's going on into the market. And today, a little bit of a red day. So pull back. On a Monday, not so surprising. It's about 3%. We're looking at a market cap of 1.37 trillion. And it's just a very boring time. And we talked about this yesterday about what's going on as far as like uh, the, the happenings in crypto and all the good news and all the banks that are getting involved. And the former New York Stock Exchange uh, president is actually coming on board for a new exchange. They're gonna bring uh, all this, these great things as far as like the, the parts of yield and DeFi into the mainstream. And uh, here we are just, chopping sideways and again as i talk about these things uh i think there's a lot of adoption going on but the powers that be and, and however you want to look at that either people are taking profits or it's overvalued or it's it's manipulation whatever you want to call it we're just going to go sideways for a while july is going to be a very boring month i think it's not 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 too much going to happen until august and that's just uh, how i see things as things start to really pick up and uh, uh, pick up steam. So these are what we have as far as the prices. So uh, Bitcoin 33.1, Ethereum is going to probably drop below 2,000, which is kind of interesting because uh, they've got a, a EIP 1559 coming up in the first week of August. So that's kind of surprising and actually dropped that much. I would have thought it would have gone the opposite way. And then for 24 hour changes, everything's down between like, you know, 0.4% all the way up to like 7, 10, 12% just depending on the uh, altcoin uh, that you're invested into. So again, um, as you're into these crypto markets on this channel, it's, it's uh, just investment opinion, not investment advice. But when you see these things, um, it's all about the long hold. And these are the types of stories that I try to bring forward. Things like what we're gonna talk about first, Fidelity goes big on crypto. I find this fascinating because Fidelity Digital Assets, I mean, they have trillions of assets under management and Fidelity has been around for a, quite a long time. And uh, for a traditional player to get into crypto, they've been in, in the game for quite some time. But for them to say these things about why they're uh, increasing and scaling was the most telling. So what's going on here? So growing demand from institutional investors have, has pushed Fidelity to increase its Fidelity Assets team by 70%. So, you know, hey, uh, if you got a lot of demand and uh, the business is growing, what do you do? You grow your business. And uh, that way you can scale up as everything starts to come in. Fidelity Digital Assets will add around 100 workers to offices in Salt Lake City, Boston, and Dublin. I had no idea they were in Dublin, but great. Uh, the president, Tom Jessup, said that the pre... This was interesting. He said that the previous year was a major breakthrough in terms of how much interest Bitcoin has attracted. And that to me is a telling sign because last year, I mean, if you're looking at like just price, it only went up to around 29,000, which wasn't that great, which is what it is right now. The breakout time really came in uh, April and May when we hit 64,000 for Bitcoin and the whole market cap for the entire cryptocurrency industry was around 2.4 trillion. Now we're at 1.4 trillion. Where did that trillion go? Well. People took profits, people got out, people, whatever they, they did with it. And, and again, we can say whatever it is. But for him to say that it was a major breakthrough from last year, what do they think is going on right now? I mean, even though we're down, we're pretty much at the same type of level. I think they're thinking for a, a massive uh, in, influx of people. So uh, to continue, he states Bitcoin has really been the entry for a lot of institutions. True. It's now really opening up a window of what else is uh, going on in the space. Very true. Jesse Ball said that, that there's an increased interest in Ethereum. Let me say that again. There is an in, there's an increased interest in Ethereum and that the company wants to be ahead of the trend. Fidelity Digital Assets only offers custody and trade execution services for Bitcoin. That's pretty much all they do. But it looks like they would like to expand this offer to major assets or more assets, as well as trade more than just on the weekdays. And he states, 
we want to be at a place where it's full time or most of the week as far as trading crypto. So here's the thing. I know when people talk about uh, Ethereum, some people love Ethereum, some people hate Ethereum, some people think that it's just too slow and that the fees are, are, are too much. It doesn't really matter, uh, in, in all honesty. If they can actually pull it off with Ethereum 2.0 as that starts to come to pass and sharding and the EIP 5059, everything else that, that comes into it, it doesn't really matter if you're looking at just price points because it's on the tips of everybody's tongue. They know about it. Do you think that a lot of these these big institutions really have really delved deep into all these different projects? Yeah, maybe. But uh, the, the retail investor and the, and the people that are out there just kind of just like FOMOing in, they have no idea. All they know is they go, well, Bitcoin sounds pretty good. And Ethereum is number two. I'm going to you know, and Bitcoin's 33,000, I'll probably just pick up an Ethereum for two grand because maybe it'll go to 30. They have no idea. They have no idea. And they have no idea about the problems and, and the different fees and everything else and the problems with the sharding and and, and if it can be done. I personally uh, own uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum are two of my largest holdings. So to me, if they make it or they don't make it, it's not a big deal to me because I've got other different products that, I, that I'm into. So I still think that they can go really well. And this article proves it because these um, these hedge funds, these big players, these institutions are now starting to ask about Ethereum and if it can go. Even Mark Cuban gets into Ethereum with its second layer solution of Polygon. So that is an interesting prospect. Let me know what you think about that in the comments section. But as we move on, I want to make mention of this. That is that uh, it doesn't matter how much you make. <laughs> it is how much you keep. And this warning, I think we really should pay attention to. So I'm going to sum up this entire article for just one thing. Uh, the FBI has heard chatter that there's going to be a big, uh, I guess you would say like an influx and in, in hacking and uh, groups trying to steal your cryptocurrency. And what they say is going to be a big issue is SIM swapping. And SIM swapping, if you don't know, uh, every kind of cell phone, well, most cell phone carriers, they have this this uh, this SIM card inside. And what people do, what these hackers will do is that they will call the company, they'll call AT&T, call Verizon, or call whoever uh, has these different SIM cards and say, I'm the owner, I need you to replace it. And they steal your information, somehow they get it, and they're able to get a new SIM card, put it into a blank phone, and then just put in all your information as far as like uh, your email accounts, uh, they can get your, your uh, exchange information, they can actually get into your exchanges. And then if you have, even if you have like, like two factor authentication set up where like, you're like, oh, well, it's, it has to go through my email first to verify so I can get into my exchange so I can actually move my, my crypto. Well, they've already got your, 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 your SIM card. They have all your information. They are just gonna go into your email, just uh, have the exchanges put that into your email. Then they're gonna get those codes and they're gonna steal all your crypto. The same thing could happen with, this is the worst one, two-factor authentication by just a text message. So like if you try to log into Kraken or Coinbase or Binance, whatever it is, they're going to send you like a this, this six-digit code on your text message. Well, now that this hacker has your has this new uh, SIM card in a blank phone with all your information, and, you're, and this is what sucks, your phone is now uh, d null and void. So you're just, you, even if you watch things, you're like, whoa, there goes all my crypto. And that can happen. So to sum it up, this is what you want to be avoiding at all costs. How do you do that? It's very simple. There's this thing. It's called a Google Authenticator. And I know there's, you know, some people say, no, no, there's a much better thing for here and a much better thing for this. But what's great about Google Authenticator is that when you download it, and here's a, an also, when you download it, I'm going to put this direct link in the description below because Google Play sucks they can have 10 different uh, authenticators on there that are actually uh, put in there by agents of chaos of, of these different uh, scam artists. So if you download the wrong one, they'll still take your stuff. Sucks, doesn't it? So uh, I'm going to give you the official one. This is from play.google.com forward slash Google Authenticator. This is the one that's been downloaded 322,000 times. And how this works is that it's it's an app that downloads in your phone and even if they sim swap it they can't get that specific app back onto your new phone that they stole from you or that new one is so uh, if the if your phone gets lost something like that then that's it there's backup code that you're going to use and there's a video that i will also link how to use the google authenticator but just use that because it doesn't send you a text message it just sends you a random six uh six num numerical code that you can uh, put in and then get access to your crypto so uh, all these different things that are happening, uh, you've been warned. So make sure you get a Google Authenticator at the very minimum. And if you even want to do even more security, don't put your Google Authenticator on your main phone. Put it on a backup phone. 
that doesn't have access to internet and just is a dummy phone because that is the safest way to do things. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our next piece where we talk about Cardano and El Salvador. And this is actually, I, I saw this on another channel and they, they talked about it yesterday and I thought it was interesting just to bring up. This was an AMA from like June 21st and no one talked about it, which is kind of crazy. So this is like a, a minute or so where, Card, where uh, Charles Hoskinson is talking about how El Salvador, uh, the president of El Salvador and his team are going to meet and talk about digitizing uh, the country and using Cardano. So just take a listen and I'll let you decide. Charles, any thoughts on El Salvador? Any communication with the country regarding ADA? Yes, we have been in talks uh, with some officials and parties in El Salvador, and I may do a state visit. We sent out all the documentation and a request for that, and so we'll meet the president. Uh, but it's basically going to be in their hands. Uh, we've talked to a few people that are in that orbit, and they have definitely expressed interest in digitizing the country and going beyond just legalizing Bitcoin. Uh, so we'll we'll get a better sense probably in the next two to four weeks about where that sits and where that's. So I find that interesting because like uh, this was done, this AMA was done on June 21st, and uh, now he's talking about two to four weeks. So maybe we'll hear something uh, later on. But I just think it's just interesting that the president of the country reaches out and says, and well, he has probably his, his people reach out. And say, this is something that we're interested in digitizing uh, the country looks like you guys are working with uh, parts of africa uh we like that and then maybe we'll want to get cardano in there uh, to do a lot of things but again there's a, there's a lot of things this is a very very long play but i just find it interesting that this is the direction that countries plural are going and then uh, just to make mention of one thing that is that smart contracts for cardano are rolling out here's the alonzo rollout plan they do not have them yet they're all in the test net and in his latest AMA, he talks about how they found some bugs, but which is normal when you uh, have things in the test net and they're fixing them as they go along. So Lonzo Blue is run in June, July was another type of test net in white. August and then September will be the actual main net when the smart contracts go live. And we are almost there. I mean, let, let's just be honest. So I find it's uh, a positive news for Cardano that they're not like just delaying things like crazy. And uh, also more good news, uh, the Grayscale Trust. I mean, they've got, uh, uh, where is it? Uh, the large scale. Uh, Cardano is the third largest one they have, 4.3%, which was added uh, about a week ago or so. And then also, if you're trying to get into the... Uh, this uh, large scale uh, cap fund, it's uh, currently unavailable. And Grayscale does that. So it doesn't mean that they, they are you know sold out or something. They just stop limiting people to come in. And uh, that's just what it is right now. And then I will just say this before, before I go on. Um, well, this is the last thing, I guess it is. Ethereum and Cardano. It seems like every time I talk about uh, Ethereum, I must talk about uh, something positive. And then if I talk about Cardano, I must talk about Ethereum because everybody on the show is like, you're just a shill for Cardano and how dare you? So uh, here you go. Uh, first of all, I talked about Ethereum and I you know, said that you know, how Fidelity is really getting into it and how great it's going to be. And I don't know what's going to happen. I'm not a part of that team. But uh, also DeFi Pulse, 55 billion is locked up. So I just want everybody to know, I talked about Cardano and I'll talk about Ethereum. It's going to be okay. And that's it. So... Uh, lastly, I will say this out of, out of the sarcasm, uh, I think they're both going to do well. Look, I don't think that Ethereum is going to be the end all be all take all. And, uh, and that is it. I, I think there's room for multiple smart contracts, uh, type of players, multiple layer one solutions like, uh, you know, Tezos, like an avalanche, like a Cardano, like an Ethereum, and they can do a lot of different things. Now, yes, Ethereum, uh, as the leading vastly uh, leading majority for uh, uh, people that are actually building on it, dApps, DeFi. But, you know, just because you're the first one doesn't mean you're going to be the first one we're going to have a uh, major advantage uh, for all time. That's all I'll say. So I think there's a room for plenty and that's it. So look, uh, my final thoughts are this. There's going to be a lot more FUD coming out. There's going to be a lot more different problems and, and uh, price action and volatility. So just be aware that July is going to suck. And that's how it is. And then we probably should pick up on August, September. And it's the same thing I talk about pretty much every single video. So let me know what you think in the comments section. That is it. So look, if you made it all the way to the end, thanks for sticking with me. I appreciate it. If you liked the video, found got a little entertainment, a little information, give it a thumbs up, a like, and consider subscribing. And that's it for today. So thanks so much. I appreciate it. See you on the next one.